you're a seismologist working at a geological observatory. In the morning, you check the equipment that monitors seismic activity and adjust the instruments. Then you inspect the movements of tectonic plates. Suddenly, one of the devices shows a strange signal. It's like a small earthquake. You make a record of this push and continue working, but the signal repeats again. A little time passes and the devices fix it for the third time. You understand that this is not an earthquake because the signal is too weak for this. It repeats every 26 seconds and resembles a pulse. The human heart pulses close to the center of the chest. The pulse of the planet also comes from its center, the equator. You call other specialists and tell them about the unusual phenomenon, but no one knows what it is. Also, you can't determine the source of the pulse. You arrive at the place where the vibration comes from and find nothing. The ground still pulses under your feet, but it's impossible to figure out the reason. In the 1960s, the pulse called microseism was discovered by seismologists in the US. More than 50 years have passed, but scientists around the world still don't know the nature of this phenomenon. It looks as if our planet has a heart hidden inside its crust, beating every 26 seconds. According to researchers, this heart may be located in the southern or equatorial part of the Atlantic Ocean in the Gulf of Guinea. This area is called the Bight of Bonnie. Every winter, the pulse becomes stronger. Then it weakens again by the summer. When scientists began exploring this place, they put forward a theory that the ocean could create the pulse. Waves hit the continental shelf of the planet. That impact deforms the ocean floor. A human hand hitting a table works on the same principle. Sit on one side of the table and put your hands on it. Let someone else hit the table from the opposite side. You will feel a vibration. Ocean waves hitting the coastline create a similar effect. Someone may object that there are waves all over the world, not only at the equator. Yes, but that's where the sun heats our planet the most. Solar energy causes powerful storms and winds and accelerates ocean currents and waves. Also, in 1980, geologists found out that Earth's tremors became stronger during storms. In other words, when waves hit the shore with more power. Not all scientists agreed with this theory. Some researchers believed the planet was pulsating because of the seismic activity. It was coming from a volcano located on one of the islands in the Bight of Bonnie. The place where the pulse was the strongest is close to the volcano. But further observations showed that the Earth's tremors happened in all parts of the Gulf of Guinea. That's why scientists can't prove any of these theories. Our planet pulsates not only from within. Earth is surrounded by a thin luminous halo. It's constantly changing its shape and shimmering with different colors. If you look at our planet using special equipment, you'll see that Earth is inside an uneven pulsating bubble. It's located at an altitude of 50 to 400 miles above Earth's surface. This bubble is called the ionosphere. That's a layer of charged particles that separates the upper atmosphere from space. In other words, this is the boundary that sets apart the region where you can still breathe and a complete vacuum of space. The International Space Station travels inside the ionosphere. Most of our satellites also move within the borders of the pulsating bubble. This natural phenomenon can both help and disrupt the operations of communication and navigation systems. It helps radio and GPS signals to get to our mobile phones, but it can also interrupt the stable connection. It all depends on the number and density of charged particles. Sunlight takes away one or two electrons from the gases surrounding our planet, and they become charged particles. These particles make up the ionosphere. It's constantly changing its shape and size. It happens because the planet rotates around its axis, and the sunlight falls on it unevenly. During the day, the ionosphere is always larger than at night. Because of this pattern, it's pulsating and constantly moving. This instability shortens the life of orbiting satellites and often puts them out of work. Radio and GPS signals pass through the ionosphere and get reflected from charged particles. Then, they fly further to their destination, to phones, navigators, and other devices with GPS and radio receivers. Our planet is not only pulsating, but also buzzing. The noise that Earth produces is called the hum. 
It's impossible to record this sound, but even so, 2 to 4% of people on the planet hear it. All over the world, people who aren't connected in any way speak about a weird buzzing sound. It interrupts their sleep and doesn't let them concentrate. This noise follows them everywhere. Perhaps you also hear it but don't pay attention. But once you notice the hum, you won't be able to unhear it. Some residents of a small village in Scotland describe this humming as a thick, low-frequency sound. There's a website on the internet with a map where people all over the world register and describe this mysterious noise. Almost everywhere, it's a low-frequency vibration, barely perceptible to the human ear. Sometimes, people say it resembles the noise of an airplane flying overhead, but quieter. Some people describe it as the sound of a running truck engine placed in the backyard. It's humming in the street when they come home. And it gets louder when they are lying in bed. If you hear it too, you can mark it on the map. There are records dating back to the 19th century that describe a sound similar to the hum. But for the first time, the media started talking about this phenomenon in the 1970s in England. Since then, many theories have been made by scientists and people who try to catch the hum. There is a hypothesis that claims the noise comes from high-speed traffic on highways, or it might be caused by too many airplanes flying in the sky. The hum and vibrations can be produced by electric stations, factories, industrial equipment, and huge air vents. Some people believe the reason for the hum is the movements of tectonic plates and the Earth's crust under the ocean waters. But no one has managed to prove it yet. In most cases, people hear the hum in big cities. And, of course, they often complain about this and demand to conduct investigations. But all the attempts to find the source of this noise haven't given any results. It's possible that 4% of people have a unique hearing that catches low-frequency sound waves. One theory says the source of the hum is special radio signals. They're used around the world to communicate with submarines. These radio signals can make people have a response. It feels as if you hear some buzzing. This happens when radiant energy collides with the soft tissues of the human skull. It stimulates the auditory nerve and creates an auditory hallucination. But the coolest theory appeared in the city of Sausalito in California. A lot of people there hear the hum, and biologists believe that fish might be the reason. There are many toadfish on the west coast. They can produce a unique sound that is not audible itself, but the sound wave coming from the fish resonates with the buildings located near the coast. This resonance produces the hum. Even one fish can do this. Imagine what happens when thousands of these sea creatures scream at the same time. But not only people living near the shore have problems with the noise. Those who live in the city center hear the hum too. And since the sound waves created by the fish can't spread so far, the theory was quickly refuted. Our planet isn't the only humming one. In 2020, scientists recorded a strange buzzing sound on Mars. This is a quiet, long beeping that spreads across the red planet's surface. Sometimes it changes a bit because of Mars quakes, which are another mystery. Earthquakes occur on our planet because of the tectonic plates movements. Stress accumulates and gets released in the crust. This produces earthquakes. But there's no plate tectonics on Mars, so Mars quakes aren't supposed to be happening there.